Today on Tested.com, we'll be taking a look at the Atlas Orion Anamorphic Lenses. Now, this is a lens package that we got recently to try out on a project. We did a collaboration with G4 and Adam built some spacesuits that we were going to give a cinematic treatment to with a sci-fi slant. And I thought this might be a perfect time to, uh, to test these out again. Quick disclaimer, I reached out to them to get a press kit. We got two sets for two weeks to use on this shoot and some other testing. I used the Atlas Anamorphics once before in the past, uh, but it was for a Panasonic shoot. I did a Panasonic full frame camera video and these lenses were sent with it. So I didn't get a whole lot of time to really dive into the lenses. It was more focused on the camera, but they really intrigued me and especially Anamorphics at this price range, which we'll go over because they are hard, good quality ones are hard to come by. Now the Orions come in two different sets, set A and set B. Set A is your 40 mil, 65 and your 100 and set B is the 32, 50 and 80. Um, I thought I would be drawn more of a set A, given that uh, I do stay in 50 quite a bit. I like the wideness of 32, but this is the Canon C500, so it's a, a full-frame camera. So 32 is actually almost too wide at times with some of the, the bowing that you see on some of the wide-angle lenses. It was great for some of our tight shots, but the 40 is really where I existed. Uh, I did a lot of handholding there. Um, I used that for some close-ups, for some wider shots, and then I would jump over to the, um, the, the 65 and 100 and the 80 quite a bit. I think I ended up really liking set A a little bit more. I think the, I think the 40 was a good wide for me. Uh, I really like that 100 as well. And then the 65 was a good 50 ish compromise. Uh, I didn't actually use the 50 as much as I probably used the 65. And I think if I was to invest $27,000, it would be for set A. That is right. $27,000. It seems like a lot of money for three lenses. That's about seven to $8,000 each lens. But keep in mind that these are production quality anamorphic lenses, which that glass can sometimes get up to $30,000, $40,000 per lens. I think Cook makes an anamorphic lens for about $30,000 just for one lens. This you're getting three at around that price. And these are built for production. These are not still lenses. Now, I, this isn't going to be that video where I compare the $1,500 Canon still lens to this and do frame by frame, side by side comparisons and say, look, you can do the same thing because there are a lot of factors that go into lenses besides just the image quality of one single frame. The build quality, the elements, the, the, the quality of the elements, the material of the elements, sometimes glass, sometimes plastic uh, or fluorite, which is a very popular element to use. There are about 20 different elements inside of this lens, it's not one giant piece of glass. And the relationship to each other are kind of moved together with the focus as, as the focus changes and zoom changes. And so you really want something that's built to last, built to last many productions for many decades that can be rented out and serviced and keep going throughout the generations. And a still lens just isn't going to do that. It's not going to last that long or it's going to break down in certain ways that can't be serviced. So production quality cinema lenses like these have that stuff taken into account. These lenses are just as much about long-term investments as they are tools. And there's so much more to explore uh, that's not going to come across in a 10 minute YouTube video like this. So let's just move on from that and talk about what these lenses are. And that is anamorphic. So what is anamorphic? I think I can, if I can give you one visual that best sums it up, it is this. If you look at the aperture on this lens, it's not a circle, it's an oval. So here's what's happening. You think about your typical spherical and aspherical lenses and you have a sort of convex circular piece of glass or element that the image is coming through that sort of best represents what the eye is seeing, for example. Everything kind of looks looks about normal as it comes through and gets pushed onto the sensor. Now what the anamorph anamorphics are doing are quite different. It's actually, it's not just pulling a circle image through an oval hole. Uh, it's actually squeezing the entire image that it's seeing. So I have the anamorphic on the GH5 right here. This is the 32 with a 2x crop, so it's giving me like 64. But it's seen very, very wide, right? And this isn't just because I have black bars <laughs> put onto the image. It's actually because the image that it's capturing is much more um, biased to horizontal than it is vertical. And then what's happening is this lens is squeezing that all in to give that into a 4.3 or a square sensor image. And then I take that into post-production and I say, hey, de-squeeze this image, pull this back out. And because of that, you get this widescreen view. That is one quality of anamorphics. But also because of that, a few other things tend to happen. Now, when I say that um, it de-squeezes and makes things look right, like I look normal now, that is not to say that things in the background or the deep focus or the front focus tend to also look normal. What's happening is I'm in focus and I'm looking great and normal and everything else starts to have a little bit of distortion based off of that lens shape. Now, you can see I have some like, little tiny circle lights right in front of the lens and those start to become oval. Now, there's one other big quality about anamorphic lenses is that the bokeh starts to become oval and stretch out vertically 
or it kind of in certain lenses it kind of it kind of manipulates at a little bit of a of an angle maybe so you get a real painterly like quality to some of your backgrounds in bokeh it sort of paints it in a weird way that's not necessarily typical of our eyes but also gives you a very distinct style that you may be going for um, or just give you something a little more dreamy a little more i guess you can you can throw the word out filmic or cinematic and when people say those kind of words cinematic they tend to be thinking all over the place right um, whether that's black bars on top of the bottom whether that's really shallow focus or in terms of anamorphic when your bokehs are actually pulling themselves out and sort of giving you a, a cool look in the background uh, anamorphics also because of the shape that they are handle light a little bit differently uh, when you give light straight down the barrel of a camera uh, what's happening there is that lens those lens elements are pulling everything out vertically i'm sorry horizontally and that's where you get your lens flares your your jj abrams like flares that are shooting across um horizontally across the lens now because of the way lenses are coated every element kind of has a treatment to it and there's coating in lenses and so most anamorphic lenses you will see will have a blue streak to them. They're pulling out uh, certain colors as they flare out and, and it's left with blue. And so you get a lot of blue. Regardless of what your color of your light is that's being shined in, it'll be blue. Atlas is actually making a new set. I believe the Atlas Anamorphic Silver Series, which has like a silver coating, which is a neutral flare, which is great because you shoot up green light or orange light or red light, you'll get that color flare, which is something that's not very typical to anamorphics and it's sort of a, a unique look all into itself. Uh, I'm very excited to rent those and try those at, at some point in the future. There's a whole bunch of reasons why you would choose anamorphics and that's one of the fun aspects of preparing or doing prep work for some kind of show or project you're working on in understanding lenses and what they do and then you can start thinking about how how one complements the, the other in telling your story. It's not just about a frame by frame or giving you the crispest sharpest image, it's about what the qualities of these lenses add and how they help you tell your story, which I think is the more fun part of understanding lenses, not just quality, not just crispness and sharpness. And that's something that Atlas kind of seems to lean into. It's not, they're not trying to be the cook anamorphic, super clean, crisp, you know, do a toe to toe with a camera shootout of any other lens and be the best quality. It's really about here is the Atlas anamorphic look and style. And you may or may not decide to go with that, which I find admirable for a lens company, um, especially when that's affordable like this. You can choose to, to lean into their characteristics or not. This was a really illuminating experience just to use these on those projects and really get a feel for how the lenses were handling all these different elements that were happening in front of the camera and then bring those to post and seeing how they uh, how they change and how they manipulated the image that we were seeing on set. So there you guys go, that's the Atlas Orion Anamorphic Lenses Set A and Set B. I think if you're taking away anything from this video, it's that uh, using lenses should not be about comparing them side by side, seeing who gives you that crisp focus, that tack sharp image, the best color rendition, the contrast. Um, it's not really about that in a lot of regards. It's about using the right lens for your story, understanding their characteristics, understanding what they do best, what they do uniquely, and choosing that for your project. That's what makes pre-pro, well, pre-production, pre and prep work for your films and your short projects a lot of fun. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time on the Tested Behind the Scenes video. We'll see you next time. Bye.